volunteering across the country is down uh, not just in the volunteer fire service but within the VFWs, the Lions Club, all the volunteer agencies are seeing a decline, but it's even harder. A lot of people are doing this as a career and you know they work 24, 48 hours uh, doing it for a living and they don't have time to come home and do it as a volunteer thing because they are raising a family or working a second or third time, third job. So it, it's really hard to, to volunteer and we're very uh, fortunate here in Chestertown because we still have a pretty solid core of 15 to 20 people that come out on a regular and then we have the ones that do try to come out help with fundraising and other events that alleviate the ones that are running calls and doing the other stuff so we're very fortunate here in Chestertown but we're always looking for new members uh, we're currently working on a junior program that allows members to come in at the age of 14 uh, we used to have a program called the Explore Post and that kind of went away. It was through the Boy Scouts of America, uh, and it was the insurance part of it. But now that we have insurance available to us to cover people at the age of 14, we're trying to re rekindle the, the junior program and get younger ones in here and get them involved. Uh, the high school has a program called Votech, um, and when you graduate, you come out with all the classes you need to be pretty much a paid fire, firefighter. Uh, anywhere you go in the state of Maryland. Uh, Brad, he uh, attended the VOTEC program, and I mean, it's a very good program. You come out with a lot of training. So. so we're actually, all of our training is through the University of Maryland College Park, and we have a, a training facility right here in Centerville that we're able to attend. And you can go anywhere throughout the state of Maryland. They have multiple training facilities. Uh, one of our members is currently taking his EMT and it's up in uh, Harford, mm -hmm. Harford County. And EMT is 160 hours of classroom now, plus your ride-alongs and other things you have to do to complete your certification. So you're almost looking at 200 hours worth of training before you're a certified EMT. Fire training right now is, what, 148 hours, 150 hours, I think? Or Roughly, did, for, I, I believe so, yeah. yeah. So, so if an 18-year-old came to you guys and said, hey, this is what I want to do, yep. where would you point him first? Um, we would point him to go take the Firefighter One program in Centerville. Uh, we actually have a young lady that just joined. She, she'll be the fourth generation of her family um, if she completes her training and stays active with us to be involved with the department. Um, so it would be really neat to see her come along. Her brother's in here. Her other brother is currently a member of Betterton. So it, it'll be really interesting to see a fourth generation come along and see if she sticks with it. But she'll she'll be attending the uh, Firefighter One program down in Centerville. Yep. And uh, you asked if we were attached to the college at all. We do get some members there, and that's where we found Steve. Steve was a, a graduate from Washington College. So every once in a while we get a few, and he stayed around. Yeah, stuck around. Yeah, and and sometimes they they come through during this during the. Uh, there are four years, right? They'll poke interest in the fire company, and um, to the Chief's point, that's how we got a few of our members. Yep. So, what caught your attention? What inspired you to go uh, to the trial? I've always wanted to be a firefighter. <laughs> um, I, all my birthday parties were at the firehouse, you name it. Um, I was very involved in athletics, so time wise, I couldn't commit to doing that kind of full time, at least through school. Um, and then uh, career-wise, um, you know, I had other aspirations, right? And, and you know, I talked to my parents about it. You know, there's not, there's not enough volunteers, right? We talked about how volunteerism is down across the board, no matter where you go. So we thought it would be a good opportunity just to volunteer. What did your parents think? Uh, they're happy about it. I mean, it's doing something that I love, and, and they're thankful that I'm doing that. And obviously, it's, a, it's serving the community, right? So... Um, you know, mom can be scared when she follows the Facebook page and, and said, oh, there's a house fire. You all right? I'm like, oh, yeah, everything's good. Yeah, but no, it's all right. And to piggyback on that, you asked, like, some of the positive things from volunteering here. You, you get another set of family that you didn't even know you needed or uh, you didn't even know that was there, really. You get brothers, you get sisters, you get grandparents, you get parents. Um, we try to do a lot of things together. 
we have our company picnic, our banquet, uh, Friday nights. We have a little fellowship down here in the evening. And what benefits that is we actually put members in the station so we get out a little faster if there is an emergency. So it might look like people are just here hanging out, but we're also making ourselves available to the public. Um, but if you have an issue at your house, if you need, if you just need to talk or need somebody, you got that fellowship and that brotherhood that uh, you hear that word used a lot. But you truly do. You get you get friends and lifetime friends. Have you ever seen the department as becoming a paid, like an employee? So I'll never say never um, because unfortunately it's uh, there's paid staff right here in this county. The EMS, the ALS and BLS uh, for King County Emergency Services is a lot of our volunteers work there. Um, the rescue squad has career services and it, it started as an eight hour program, went to a 12 hour program and then to a 24 hour program. So there's uh, career staff in that station right up the street. Um, there's a possibility, you know, 10 years, 15 years, can't really say when, but there's probably going to be some sort of uh, paid person in, in, in a station here somewhere. What do you so. need from the county these days? Help with vol getting volunteers and funding. I mean, everything's going up in price. Our ladder truck that's currently sitting out there was $1.3 million when we bought it 10, 10 years ago. And now you're looking at 2.3, 2.4, and it's a very basic truck. It, it, it looks pretty, and it, it's big, but there's not a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, the truck committees over the years, I give them a lot of credit. We kept things very basic and very functional, um, and we don't do a lot of marking up, putting extra things on that's just cosmetics. We put things that are operational. Yeah, so we have uh, so we do a lot of fundraising. Um, as Chief mentioned, I would say a third of our operational budget comes from fundraising events, our fund drive. So um, we have a car show on August fourth, which is next Sunday, out of Wharton Park. Um, and then vendors and food. Yeah, and vendors, food. Um, it's our second time doing it this this time around. Um, it was really successful last year. So looking for a bigger turnout this year. Um, and then August, or September 21st, we are having our first annual uh, craft brew fest down at the foot of High Street. So tickets are live for that. They're on the website. Um, we'll have roughly anywhere from eight to 12 different breweries. Um, we'll have live music, food trucks. Um, so looking to kind of branch out beyond our normal chicken barbecues, pit beef sales, um, kind of get more of the public involved yeah. in our fundraising efforts. We'll have some fire prevention stuff available that evening. If people need smoke alarms or anything like that, come on out. That's my uh, next question. The last question would be, is there a recurring issue that you run into with uh, emergency um, fires that you see can be avoided because people are not paying attention to something or uh, other or is it just all random big thing i think we see is people forget about tree clearing the lanes and trees around their driveways and stuff like that if we can't get to you we can't assist you um it, it that's a big thing that we run into and thank yeah. you guys yep. yeah just remember we were 100 percent volunteer yeah. for our company right so um you know all of our Funding is from our local residents, and then we get some funding from, from state and local governments. Um, but any support is greatly appreciated. Um, it's not a cheap uh, operation to run. Um, we have our limitations, and you know we try to do the best of what we can. But, yeah, feel free if, if people are able to support the fire company or any of the emergency services in the county. Um, please, by all means, uh, your support is always greatly appreciated. Yeah. It, and I wouldn't say we get forgot about sometimes, but, you know, people are busy and they're like, oh, fire, if I call 911, they're coming. Yeah. So yeah. it's just one of them things that right. they, they know we're coming, but, yeah. you know. You know, you get some support for that. And that. We have a pretty good community here. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. we do. Yeah. And we get recognition. And, yeah. and we're not really in it for recognition either. Yeah. We're, I mean, we're here to, to provide a service to the community. Oh. Yep. Um, but as you know, you know, it, it's nice to get some positive feedback from the community yep. to keep morale up around and, and it's always going to be good feedback.